tuning in to Promise World of Science. Today it's gonna be extra interesting because we're dealing with the oceans and the mystic deep sea. For that reason, today marine biologist Lara Fish is here with us. Here's our first question. Regarding the oceans, what is actually worth knowing? Well, 71% of the world's surface is covered with oceans. They are divided into the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean. In the upper parts of the sea, several plants are growing close and take their energy by photosynthesis. This zone is called the Euphotic Zone. Within this zone, there is the dysphotic area, where the water is not very deep, so you can just see through the sunlight alone. However, nothing can grow. Even deeper, of course, is the zone where no light can penetrate. The bottom consists of sand, mud and stone, and it is the largest area on Earth populated with living organisms. The animals down there live off corpses of whales, other animals and plants. About 97% of the water on Earth is salt water. The sea has a salt content of an average of 35.3 grams of salt per liter. If you were to solve the entire salt from the sea, you could build a 36 meter high wall that goes once around the Earth out of it. Wow! And what can you tell us about the creatures living in the oceans? Principally, creatures of the sea depend on sunlight. Therefore, you can't find them just everywhere in the sea. These animals and plants differ extremely from the terrestrial ones. The most important plants are tiny algae. By ocean currents, the nutrients are transported in the open ocean. In the shallow water zone near the surface, where enough sunlight is available, more plants grow. Quite small animals, like plankton for example, nourish from these plants. These animals are in turn eaten by fish, such as sardines and herring. These fish are again eaten by larger predatory fish, which in turn are prey for sharks. By the way, sharks are very important for the sea. They eat sick or weak fish and so provide for an ecological balance in the oceans. Interesting to mention is that the shark has to move all of his lifetime, even when he sleeps. Oh, poor sharks. Well, where do actually most of the marine animals live? Most species live in the coral reefs of tropical areas. In fact, probably nowhere in the world such a large diversity of species can be found as in coral reefs and the number of those species is estimated at about 2 million. The largest reef, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, stretches over 2,300 kilometers. Amazing! Okay, and so what can you tell us about the deep sea? Yes, the deep sea is the part of the ocean that has been explored the least. Even the moon's surface is better known than the deep sea. Here one finds the strangest and most mysterious creatures of the world. This here is the anglerfish. The so-called anglo of the head attracts prey. As soon as it comes closer, the fish catches it. This is a vampire squid. in the ocean is the Mariana Trench. It is located in the Western Pacific Ocean and its deepest point is 11,034 meters. Today we are going to welcome quite special creatures in the studio. Our assistants Bim and Bum are going to bring them in now. Here they are!
These are our seahorses. So what can you tell us about them? And what exactly makes them so unique? Well, technically seahorses are fish. Together with the scraps of fish and other species that belong to the family of pipefish. They live in tropical and temperate seas worldwide. They look quite special and are a remarkable life form. Most interesting about them is that they're not the females but the males are carrying the offspring. The females produce eggs and store them in a fanny pack of males. There they are getting fertilized and hatch after about 12 days. Seahorses are among the most endangered animal species. Thanks for sharing these amazing facts with us. Now, could you also tell us what endangers the oceans? Due to global warming, the oceans overheat slightly and also they have to absorb more of the released carbon dioxide. Another consequence of the climate change are rising sea levels. Similarly, overfishing is a big problem. People catch too many fish. 52% of marine fish stock is getting intensively exploited so that an increase is no longer possible. There are now 80% of the economically important fish stocks fully exploited, overexploited or depleted. Each year millions of tons of useless killed bycatch in fishing boats is getting thrown back overboard. Also dolphins and rare fish species are getting caught in fishing nets and then simply thrown back dead into the sea. A third of the fish catch can be used, the rest is referred to as waste. Shipwrecks harm the environment mainly because of fuel oil. Because of that, the plumage of birds and fishes gills are getting clogged, which leads to the painful death. Maritime disasters also have far-reaching consequences for the environment. Due to this, also the largest mammals in the world have to suffer. Whales. Mankind has managed to get about 80 species of whales nearly extinct, while others are already dead. Despite the whaling ban, hunting of whales is still in progress. It is so sad how far humanity has made it and how many whales are already at the edge of extinction. It is a pity what happens to them. People use whale bones to make dyes, eat the meat, use the butter for cosmetics and lubrication oil, and yet you can still use any other oil. Or they regard it simply as an attraction in parks to have fun times while these animals are really suffering in captivity. We must all try to protect our oceans as well as possible, use disposable products as little as possible and generally look after the environment. Thank you so much for coming to us. Goodbye. You're welcome. Well, that's it for today. I hope you liked it again. Thanks for the attention. Bye-bye.